today is iPhone launch day, so I'm at the Eaton Center right now. It's 8 a.m. and I'm gonna be, I think, one of the first to try iPhone 16, so it's a fun day. Come along. got the goods. I did indeed. iPhone 16 and iPhone 16 Pros are officially out in the world and I was lucky enough to get my hands on an iPhone 16 Pro. Today I thought it'd be a fun idea to unbox it together and share my first impressions from the POV of a creator who uses my phone a lot as a work tool and someone who just genuinely has interest in the latest tech as a form of increasing my productivity and making my life easier. So I want to wanna chit chat about the, the new device, show my setup of it, all the fun things. So let's get into it. I feel like this unboxing was particularly anticlimactic because inside the box there's really not much going on these days. There's the phone itself which honestly looks as stunning as it probably ever will. I always find it really satisfying to get those stickers off of there and power it on. But aside from the phone itself, there's also a charging cable, a USB-C charging cable that's braided which I do really like. And also some papers with some very, very tiny fine print that I will not be reading. My iPhone 16 Pro is the one terabyte version in natural titanium and the iPhone Pro lineup comes in four beautiful colors, one of which is a new desert titanium. There's also a white and black titanium in addition to the one that I got, which is natural. The natural finish definitely has more of this gray look to it and I really like it. I'm coming from an iPhone 15 Pro, a blue iPhone 15 Pro to be exact. It's definitely fun having a pop of color in my phone lineup, but I will admit that I'm excited to be back to more of a neutral color way, which is probably not a popular opinion because I know everyone gets really excited about the fact that the iPhone 16 lineup has a lot more vibrant colors, including this beautiful pink that in person when I saw it today, I was kind of taken aback by how much I did like it because it just, it just really has some punch to it when you see it. These are beautiful phones that you are tempted to want to just have shown off to the world because like what what case is needed here it's just a beautiful device but I do need a case so I immediately have ordered one off of Amazon I just got a clear case and also a screen protector a glass tempered screen protector to put on top of this now one accessory that is carrying over for me from my iPhone 15 Pro is this MagSafe pop socket this is the best invention ever and they do now make them in pop sockets that aren't as large in the surface area of the the MagSafe portion. There's ones that look like more traditional pop socket sizes, but this is just so handy for again making me feel extra secure while handling this device and the fact that yeah I can take it off and go through a period of not using it if I want to and it's nice in this case where I don't have to buy a new one I can just pop it over to my new phone see already this feels better because transfers from iPhone to iPhone are so easy my phone visually looks very identical right now to my iPhone 15 Pro I recently did a video on what's on my iPhone and my favorite apps and how I get this customized app look I do for two reasons one to add some aesthetic to my home feed but also to create a little less intense saturations of colors on my home screen like to make it a little bit more of a calming place I guess is what I'm trying to say all the iPhone 16s come loaded with the new updated iOS 18 and one thing I want to try out is being able to customize the look of your phone without all of these app shortcut changes so if I edit home screen click edit and click customize you can now have your apps in a light mode a dark mode you can have it automatically switch between both or you can go for a tinted look see this is really convenient because when you're doing custom app icons with the shortcut app you have to change every single app individually but this allows you to do a lot of drastic changes with just a slide of the finger it's one step rather than like having to do that for all of your apps let me use this dropper tool oh yeah like you can pick up colors from your wallpaper and uh, just really add to the the customization element. Oh, I like the look of white apps. Whoa. And then you can also have small icons or large icons. And I think, I think I like the large ones. Unrelated to the iPhone 16 Pro specifically, but this is an iPhone app that I think anyone who loves books will adore. I didn't talk about it in my recent what's on my iPhone video because I hadn't discovered it yet. It's called Literary Clock and it's a clock app that tells you the time with book quotes. So if it's 2 11 PM, like it is right now, it is going to pull up a quote from a book that has the time to 11 and you can have this app run on a widget so every time the time changes a new quote 
for that time pops up on the screen so you can read the time. It's so cool. There's been really interesting quotes and excerpts that have come up on this widget that I end up getting distracted every time that I want to know what time it is because I want to see what, what book quote comes up. I just think it's so funny that even though there's a ton of books out there that there are enough references to time that you're able to find that specific of an excerpt or quote. Another update I'm looking forward to using on iOS 18 is the fact that you can now animate text and I can take the word hey and make it big or I can make it nod, ripple, <laughs> explode. Reactions are now also colorful which is a nice fun touch. And you can also schedule text messages now which I guess could potentially be handy. Now, my 15 and 16 do look pretty similar though from the build side of things. I think the biggest visual differences are the fact that the bezels on my 16 are just slightly smaller, which I don't think you would notice if you were just looking at the 16 Pro, but when you see the two screens, the 15 Pro and the 16 Pro side by side, it's a little bit more noticeable. The iPhone 16 also has a camera control button, a new camera control button on the bottom right side of the phone. Now, from my understanding, this button is trying to emulate the real camera experience of clicking a shutter. So it has haptic feedback. So theoretically, you can be able to eventually a half click to focus on a shot and then if you full click it'll take the shot just like a regular camera but that feature isn't yet on the iPhone 16 Pro it is coming it does allow right now is quick access to your camera you can also double click the button to be able to change different camera settings quickly with just a scroll admittedly I am skeptical about how much I'm going to use that button it's a little finicky to use but we'll see well, you know this is first impression so who knows when it comes to my phone the camera is always the highest point of interest for me because as a creator I'm always capturing content and it is so amazing to be able to rely on your phone camera when you are out and about like I at this point don't ever feel like I need to carry around even a camera like the one that I'm using right now which is a small point and shoot Canon G7X and it's not that long ago in the grand scheme of things like maybe a handful of years ago where I still didn't feel like I could rely on my phone camera but especially with the iPhone 15 Pro, I have been using it so much to vlog and to capture short form content on Instagram and TikTok. But I do think the 4K capabilities sometimes make it even more powerful than my G7X Mark II that can't currently do 4K. So there are times where I'm opting for my iPhone camera over my point and shoot. It's just amazing to see how far it's come because I remember, you know, not that long ago when people would say to creators that were beginning starting off that, you know, you can just use your phone camera to get started and then, you know, upgrade from there. That used to be said because, you know, phone cameras were good, but they were clearly not as good as other options, but it was a good starting place. But now I feel like where the iPhone 15 Pro camera is and where I assume the iPhone 16 Pro camera is, is we're at a place where, you know, you can really create content exclusively on your phone if you wanted to, particularly for the average creator. Obviously, I can't speak um, for people who are a lot more technical in photography or film, but uh, for social, it's amazing. So the iPhone 16 Pro camera has definitely been the thing I've been most excited to just dive into. I'll be honest with you, I'm not the creator to go to to get a super detailed camera comparison review of like what's the best camera on the market or what's better, the 15 or 16 Pro camera. The iPhone 16 Pro introduces tone control. This, this is the thing. This is going to be the thing that I'm gonna be just immersing myself in. It allows you to change undertones of your photo in real time. So if you keep swiping, you get different types of undertones, natural, luminous, dramatic, quiet, cozy, ethereal, muted black and white, stark black and white. And then in each of these, you can further make changes to tone, color, palette by, you know, using this little grid here. I'm someone when I'm taking photos with my iPhone, I'm always adjusting the brightness manually because I just like to get a really specific look. And I like the fact that I just have more things I can I can change in real time. There's also some exciting changes to video on the audio side of things that I'm curious to experiment with. After you finish filming a video, you can actually go to audio mix and make changes to how the audio is processed. Of the different modes, I think in-frame is the most interesting one because you theoretically should be able to capture just the audio or voices in the frame that you see and anything else should be, you know, lowered or muted. This is me talking beside the camera 
behind it. There's studio mode as well, which Apple claims will make it sound like you filmed your clip in a professional studio. And cinematic mode, which is, you guessed it, supposed to sound more cinematic, like a movie, because all of the sounds and voices are directed towards the front of the screen. I'm curious to see what this sounds once I'm reviewing this clip, but I'll have to see if they have any practical use. I would imagine in frame and studio would be the most useful for me as a creator. The exciting part about these phones is they're supposed to be designed purposely for Apple intelligence, which has been talked a lot about with these phones and how much you know more useful and productive and convenient it's going to make these devices. But as I'm sure you know, if you've watched anyone talk about these phones, they aren't currently able to do things with Apple intelligence because it hasn't been officially rolled out yet. It's coming at another date, which yeah, is a little bit disappointing that with the new phone, you don't get to really test it out to its fullest extent. So I have no idea what to anticipate with that and how it'll like help, help make my life better. I've experimented my fair share with AI in my creator workflow for helping refine my writing and help brainstorm concepts and start the process of outlining, even come up with interesting hooks for short form content. Like there's no limit to what you can do with AI in so many industries. I feel like there's there's lots to play with. So I am curious to see Apple's take on it. And I think the fact that the phone is built and prepared for that, it's great. I just, I do wish it was here now. Because as it currently stands, my iPhone 16 Pro isn't that different from my 15 Pro. And I feel like that's the trend always with phones when you're upgrading from one year to the next is you're not gonna notice a ton of big improvements. So for the average person, I don't think if you're having like a 15 Pro that you need to rush out and get your hands on a 16 Pro. But as someone who does rely heavily on my phone camera for work, I will say that I am loving the fact that there's like these little tiny upgrades that are I think gonna make my my phone game, my, my photo game at least, a little bit more interesting with these tone changes. So TBD, I'll try and update you with my thoughts as I use the phone more, especially uh, once Apple intelligence comes into play. In the comment section down below, I wanna hear your thoughts on phone colors. Are you someone who does want more pops of color in phone lineups? Or are you someone who doesn't mind the more neutral tones? I love tech and the innovation that comes with it and also working on ways to develop a healthier relationship with it. But there's no question that I think it's amazing that we we live in a time where we just have access to so many incredible tools. Like the power that we have now in our fingertips is is pretty bonkers to me. I, I To this day, I'm still like, whoa, this is wild what we're able to do. These phones are more powerful than full on computers I used as a kid. Not a groundbreaking thought, but one that does make my brain rattle occasionally. I'll see you soon with a new video. Until then, bye guys.